Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel Pharma World. Today's topic is RT, RRT, RF, and RRF in HPLC analysis. Retention time, relative retention time, response factor, and relative response factor are important parameters to understand in HPLC analysis. Let us understand the basics. By its simple meaning, retention means how long the compound will be retained in the HPLC column. RRT is the retention with respect to other reference peak. Response is the peak area of the compound when eludes out completely of the HPLC column. Relative response factor is how much the response will be with respect to the other reference peak. Let us see more on the subject. Retention time. Retention time is the amount of time a compound spends in the column after it has been injected. This is measured as the time in minutes from injection point to the apex of the peak of the compound. Apex means when the peak starts eluting from the baseline, the peak area counts increase to a maximum extent where it reaches the apex point and slowly descends back to the baseline. The time taken from the injection point so this apex point is considered as retention time. Depending upon the chemical composition and orientation, the retention time is very specific for each compound. This specific characteristic of the compound is utilized greatly for identifying the compound. In addition to the chemical composition, the spatial oriented cis and trans isomers also will have different retention times. Retention time is variable depending upon the length, load of the stationary phase and diameter of the column. This aspect is easy to understand. Let us suppose that the column length is increased. Obviously, the retention time of the compound will be longer and hence the retention time is more. Similarly, if the length of the column is reduced, the retention time will be shorter. Same thing will happen for different loadings of the stationary phase. If the stationary phase load is more, the retention time will be longer and vice versa. Retention time varies depending upon the flow rate of the mobile phase. This point also can be understood logically. Faster the mobile phase rate, sooner the peak eludes. That means lower the RT and slower the rate of flow of the mobile phase, longer the RT. Retention time also varies with temperature of the column. In this case also, more the temperature, lower the retention time and lower the temperature, longer the retention time. This is the typical example extracted from USP 621 chapter. Retention time is measured from the point of injection to the midpoint of the peak where maximum height is achieved. Relative retention time. Retention times are absolute numbers. Relative retention times are a ratio with reference to another peak in the same chromatogram. Relative means where the peak appears with reference to another peak. So it is a relative term. For example, I run at a speed of 50 meters per minute and you run at a speed of 100 meters per minute from the same starting point. 
what is my relative speed when compared with you? It is half, isn't it? How did you get that value? My speed is divided by your speed. That is 50 divided by 100, which will be, which will be equal to half. It is so simple to understand. Relative retention times are calculated against selected reference peak. So, in the same example, your speed is considered as reference. In the example above, the absolute retention times are TR1 and TR2 minutes. You can clearly identify the absolute individual retention times as TR1 and TR2 of two peaks in the typical example of USP in the previous slide. You can visualize as the speed of the peak. Relative retention time is calculated as the ratio that is TR1 divided by TR2 where TR2 is considered as a reference peak. So, the relative retention time of the first peak is the ratio of RT of the first peak and the second peak. Let us see the typical RT and RRT example. In this example, the retention times are arbitrarily fixed at these points 10, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 22 and 24 minutes. Let us consider the peak at 19 minutes as reference. See this table and try to understand. RTs are given in the first column. The second column has the RRT with reference to peak at 19 minutes. The third column gives the information on where the peak appears. Any peak with a RRT less than 1 will appear before the reference peak and any peak more than 1 appears after the reference peak. These RRTs are constant for a given set of conditions. Response factor RF. Response factor is the area of the peak for a definite concentration of the compound. Let us see the another aspect, the response factor. How much response will be recorded for a definite concentration of the compound is the basic concept for the response factor. Here also it is a ratio. The peak area divided by the concentration. Peak area is measured as number of counts in the chromatogram and concentration as microgram per ml. The robotic HPLC system records the area counts very accurately. In uh, earlier days of chromatography, the chromatogram used to be printed on a 2D XY graph sheet and the squares were counted for the entire area of the peak. Concentration is obtained as microgram per ml of the solution. Response factor is calculated as RF is equal to area counts of the peak divided by concentration. So, this is a simple arithmetic calculation. This also will be automatically done by the robotic HPLC if programmed for the purpose. Response factor may change from one compound to the other. The detector response will vary for each compound. Let us understand the relative response factor RRF. RRF is relative peak response to the API or reference compound at the same unit concentration. As in the case of RRT, RRF also is determined with reference to another compound or mostly by the API 
in which the impurities are being estimated. RRF is calculated as response factor of the impurity divided by the response factor of the API or reference compound at the same concentration. So, the RF of impurity divided by the RF of API or reference compound will give you the relative response factor which is abbreviated as RRF. RRF is also calculated as slope of the impurity divided by the slope of API or reference compound. You can make replicate injections with different linear concentrations and calculate the slope to get RF. RRF is the ratio of slope of impurity with slope of the API or reference compound. Slope is calculated by injecting various concentrations of impurity and the API reference compound and recording the responses for each concentration. Your robotic HPLC automatically provides this information of slopes when once programmed with replicate injections. But it is important to understand what exactly the meaning of the response factor and relative response factor. Let us see some uses of RRF. It is an alternate approach for estimating the impurities for which the impurity standards are on short supply. This is important information for understanding. Sometimes there will be shortage of impurities with authorized supply agencies. So, the test method provides RRF for estimation of the impurities accurately. In the area normalization method estimation of impurities, the relative response of each peak with reference to the main peak is considered as one unit, that is one. The basic principle in area normalization method is that the response factors for all the eluting peaks is considered as one. That is the reason why they are called related substances for which the response is same. That is the relationship among the impurity peaks and the main API peak. Let us understand this point easily in the next slide. This is one typical chromatogram. See how the value for peak 3 was estimated. You can try any other peak in similar way. You get the percentage of that peak. In this example, the response factor for each peak is considered as 1. So, always remember that area normalization method is done with this consideration. Other points to note. Retention time will have minutes as unit of measure, whereas relative retention time will not have any units because it is a ratio. It is simple to understand that the absolute values will have units of measure, whereas for ratios there are no units of measure. Retention time varies, whereas relative retention time is a constant for a given set of experimental conditions. RT will vary with change in test conditions like flow rate, column length or column temperature etc. But RRT is a constant. Response factor will have area per unit concentration as unit of measure whereas relative response factor will not have any units. The same concept is valid for response factors and relative response factors also. Response factors also may vary whereas the relative response factor is a constant for a given set of experimental conditions. Same as in RT and RRT. I hope that this short video is useful 
to understand the basic information of RT, RRT, RF and RRF. Read USP chapter 621 or EP 2.2.29 and 2.2.46 for more elaborate and wonderful information. Unless the intent of these chapters is understood, you cannot become a good chromatographer. Be a doctor to understand the diagnosis of HPLC working system. Don't be only a simple compounder to inject the samples and leave everything to God or to the HPLC system and take printouts of the chromatogram at the end. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Also, please leave a message in the comments box for any further support. Thank you.